Well, howdy there. I guess you beat me again this morning. Well, I mean, it was a long weekend. So I, uh, you know, just getting started late, okay? You must have just not had a long weekend, and so you're here checking out the Thunderbird. Well, it's a great day to be alive. I know, the sun's still shining when I close my eyes. Some hard times in the neighborhood, but uh, everything is solved by chopping wood. I don't, it's still a work in progress. You know, I'm still writing songs. I just, I'm not, you know, I'm just kind of sounding board. Was that good? Was that not good? I'll, um, I'll try to come up with something else. Okay. <laughs> well, got my brain juice. Um, and I can see, by the way you're standing, you're checking out the Thunderbird. I actually don't know what I'm doing. I mean, <laughs> yeah, thanks. That is clear. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but uh, today, I'm just not sure because I kind of just walked in, I left everything uh, on the weekend, and uh, now I'm coming back. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a little bit on this car. Um, if you remember, the owner brought it in for um, the, the, the gauge that measures water temperature. Okay. You're going to just have to forgive me. Hang on a minute. <sighs> absorbing, absorbing, thinking better, maybe. Okay. Um. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I keep turning away. I don't know how that helps, but... Um. It's running hotter than he wants. I've driven the car a bit, and it's not overheating at all. It's just running a little bit past halfway. Um, <clears throat> so I'm either going to probably recommend a cooler thermostat, which I don't think he wants to do. If he wants the stock thermostat in there. Uh, we could also do a coolant flush. Um, and, and just see if there are any restrictions in there, maybe flush some rust out of there. Um, the radiator looks good, but you know, the engine inside, you can't see that. So uh, we might suggest doing that. Um, he had an ignition problem where sometimes it would click and then it would start. It hasn't done it for me. So I'll probably throw it up on the lift and just check the connections to the starter, make sure that's good. And uh, seems like there's one other thing, but I can't remember. I can't read it from here. Oh, uh, let me see. T-Bird, overheating, ignition switch. Oh, vibration. I think that might be a tire. Uh, I don't, I didn't really experience any super vibration. Um, it's, uh, you know, not bad enough to where you'd worry about it. So anyway, I'll probably piddle around, around with that after I clean up the shop a little bit. And then, uh, and then I've got it on my mind <clears throat> to work on the 67 Mustang that hasn't run in 20 years. Allegedly, it could be longer looking at the car. So, uh, yeah, we'll maybe dive into that uh, a little bit later. Anyway, I'm so glad you're here again. And uh, let's, let's just sit down a minute, enjoy some coffee, uh, and then get to it. You know, there's nothing but to do it. That's not a song. Okay. I need more coffee.
So I've got an estimate um, in progress for the Thunderbird. So we'll wait to see what comes back. Uh, probably end up replacing the thermostat and doing a flush. And uh, maybe even putting tires on it. We'll see. So, uh, but I've got, um, well, I named him. I think he's a him. Uh, and it's uh, Dustang. <laughs> it's his Dustang. The Dustang. <laughs> Whatever. I think it's obvious why I, w why I would name this car Dustang or the Dustang. Um, and it's, it's uh, because it's dusty. It's got dust on, you know. Sometimes I think you look at me kind of confused on purpose, so I will over explain. Uh, and I fall for it every time. Okay, well, uh, let me bring you in here. You know, you know the drill. Walk over here and uh, I'll show you kind of what I've been, well, obviously I've got the hood off, uh, what I've been looking at and kind of where, where I'm going to go. I've already erased everything about Mr. E off the whiteboard and I replaced it with Dustang. So uh, anyway, come here, I'll show you. Okay, so if you remember right, the hood would not close. And I guess I could have shown you that, but uh, take my word for it. It was, it was not closing, and also you can tell it's been rubbing here for a while, uh, and on the back there. Um, so at some point in its life, the hood wasn't latched all the way, and it blew open in the wind and clearly bent something. So um, first of all, I believe it bent the, the hood itself. Um, if I stick a, a, a flat edge here, you can kind of get a look on how it's not really flat. In fact, it's way worse on this side. Um, yeah, it, it's obviously we've got a little issue right there. So he just wanted me to look at that. I am not, I would never describe myself as a body man. I can do body work, uh, but I always let my customers know if you want me to do something, well, some things I'll just refuse to do. I just won't do it because I'm not comfortable doing it. But in this case, since uh, Dustang is just a driver, um, this isn't a restoration. This is, hey, can we get the hood to close? Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to get these right. Um, just kind of tweak them back into a closer position at least. Um, and then if you notice these hinges, so take a look at this one, you know, how it's oriented with the, with the bars and everything. And if you slide over here to this one, you will know, well, you might not notice, but it's, it's obvious to me that this is, this is bent. And uh, also, this is kind of tweaked up this way. So my advice is going to just, let's just put new hinges on it. Let's tweak that back into place and mount the new hinges. But because old cars, and if you've got one, you know, if you've had one, you know, and if you're going to buy one, well, you ought to know, uh, it's never quite that simple. So um, if you notice here on this side, you've got a mounting bolt here, and then you've got one down here, and then there's also one back here, which you can't see. Uh, but if you notice, this upper one, I don't know if you see anything wrong with that. Let's uh, go under the car if we have enough light to see. Okay, you can see the back side 
Uh, maybe up closer to the top, you see that movement? Okay, that's supposed to be all metal there. Oh, let me retrieve my flashlight or I will never find it again. Um, so this upper mount is clearly not doing mounting things. Uh, and it's also bending this lower mount because it's been moving a while. So again, I'm not a fabricator, uh, I'm not a body man, but it, it, in most cases I, I will just either refer the work or uh, I will subcontract it. Uh, I will do it with the understanding that I have uh, craftsmen with whom I work and they will do a good job and I will stand behind their work as will they. And uh, if you want me to just handle it, I will handle it and we can do that. Again though, in this case, uh, Dustang is a survivor driver slash, you know, whatever you want to say. So I will probably um, talk to him about uh, putting some new metal there, reinforcing, uh, again, nothing fancy, but something very serviceable that will be fine. Uh, it just won't be a new inner fender, which of course is also way more expensive because yeah. So anyway, that's the first thing. I've already written it on the board over there. These are things that I must talk to the owner about. Um, the main thing though was getting this engine running again. Um, this is the first time I've looked at it, really looked at it. I have the hood off. I don't know why we have to look at the hood when I talk about it, but you know, it's important, you know. Um, and I, uh, yeah, I'm just kind of taking a peek. I think I have an old battery that I can throw in here. But what I'm going to do first is see if I can get this to spin over by hand. Uh, just, you know, is the engine free? And then I will probably pull the plugs, check them, and um, then I, I will pour oil down all of the cylinders and just kind of let it, even though, even if it turns by hand, we want to create as little uh, extra wear as possible. So if I can coat those cylinder walls with oil before, you know, because we, we don't have oil pressure right now, um, that will maybe save some scoring and save some rings and, and whatnot. So uh, once I let it soak, then I will, um, assuming all of that works, I will hook a battery to it and we'll just crank it over with the plugs out, let it kind of push all the oil out um, and see if we can build oil pressure uh, just cranking it. Um, and then, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go from there. I don't know if, if fuel, nothing. We're just gonna start with, does it turn over? Let's get it soaking. Um, and we don't know anything about the fuel system or, you know, nothing. I'm assuming, I'm assuming it's gonna fight us. So I just wanna minimize the damage uh, while it's fighting us. That's my goal. All right, uh, I'm going to uh, do the uh, previously mentioned tasks on this car real quick. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, holler at you if I notice something that I think you might wanna see. So, okay then.
Okay, well, let's uh, catch you up here since you've been, you know, just lounging around, not paying attention. It's okay. I enjoy your company, even if all you're doing is scrolling on your phone over in the corner. That's fine. Uh, truth be told, I don't have much to say most of the time. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, so um, this is how far I've gotten. Uh, last night, I ran carb cleaner through here. I, I lubed up some of the joints and everything. Um, I also ran carb cleaner through here uh, to just try to wake up that pump, the diaphragm in there, just kind of let moisture sit on it or, you know, loosen it up overnight. Um, and then I took the plugs out. Um, you know, they've been in there a while, but they all pretty much look like this. So that's actually not a bad thing. Um, if I can get the car fired up, we'll probably replace plugs, but I'm, we're just gonna, we're just probably gonna uh, use these for now. We'll see about that. Um, I also disconnected the, this is the line that comes in from the uh, tank into the pump uh, for two reasons. One, if the pump starts pumping, I don't, I'm assuming the tank's dry. I don't know that, um, but I don't want it sucking things up. Originally, I was going, going to replace the hose and put a filter in it, but um, this hose, check out this hose. I can't even bend it with my hand. It's so crispy, <laughs> like it is rock hard. So, uh, but I did blow some air I threw here backwards just to see if I could hear it in the tank. And I'm pretty sure I heard air escaping somewhere over here. So that's not a good sign. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but uh, we probably have some sort of leak happening. I don't know. Anyway, we can run the engine off a jug for a while if, if it comes to that, that's not a big deal. We just need to see if we can get it going. Also, he had these, <clears throat> I call them GM style, stud style wires on here for the battery. Um, well, I don't have one in the shop right now, so I just swapped out some cables that I had, ground and power, so that I can just use the battery I have for now, just to use one to, you know, try to get it working. What else? What else did I do? Oh, uh, the radiator was bone dry. So I went ahead and filled it up, checked for leaks, no leaks yet. Though again, these are all probably gonna have to be replaced. Um, I just want moisture to the water pump if the engine's turning, uh, so it's not turning dry. Um, and that's about it. That's where we're at. I checked the oil. We can check it together here just because, you know, uh, it's pretty clean, actually. Pretty clean oil. Um, I'm sure even if this oil is 20 years old, like he changed it right before he stored the car, it, it's not losing its viscosity. As long as there's no water or anything in there, uh, it's, it's going to be fine for these purposes. So I did check on the inside. It has a oil pressure gauge assuming it's working, when I crank the engine, I'll be able to see if I'm building any. Um, but basically, I think I'm ready. The plugs are out. I, I lubed up all the cylinder walls last night, so they've been soaking. Um, I was able to turn the engine over by hand uh, with the fan. I know it's loose. So I think what I'm gonna do is hook a battery up, uh, sniff for, you know, burning smells, check for smoke. And uh, as long as uh, the car doesn't start trying to burn to the ground, we'll uh, turn the key on it, see what happens. So I also disconnected this. It's kind of redundant, but I don't need, you know, cables sparking on things. We'll just 
disconnect the uh, juice maker. You know, uh, whatever it's called. I've had two cups of coffee, but you know what? Sometimes I just can't be bothered to name things. So, okay. Um, yeah, let me grab a battery and we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. See if we can just hear it crank at least. This battery is from 1120. So it's a few years old. I don't remember what I pulled it out of. Um, but I pulled it out of something, maybe uh, bland. Maybe I, I don't know. It might've been bland, come, in, come to think of it. Okay, uh, let's do it this way. Okay, so let's look up the positive first. made this cable way too long because it's not staying in the car and I didn't want to cut it because, you know, I might want to uh, reuse it for something. Okay, let's actually, let's loosen that up. It's not really great to... I have the positive up against, not up against, but close to some metal. I don't love it, but that's okay. I don't have to love it. Okay, that's probably good enough to crank it. All right, let's... Uh, Check for sparkles. I'm not getting any sparkles. I heard something click though. So. So far so good. So if, if you touch the uh, Say the negative, you know, when you're first hooking up the battery and it sparks, it means something's drawing. There's a draw somewhere. Um, it didn't do that, but I did hear a click. So something was activated. I don't know what it was. Crank it over. that. Golly, it turns over so easy. <laughs> um, right, so uh, I guess the next thing for me to do is see if, let's see if I have spark. And if I have spark, then we'll put the plugs back in and um, put some fuel to it, see what happens. Huh. Yeah, it was just spinning over very freely. So with the plugs in, it'll be, it should be uh, building compression, so it might sound a little bit different, but yeah, it wasn't nothing, it was good. So. Uh, let me uh, just speed up my work here, you know? I can't be doing slow work all the time. And then I'll bring you back in whenever I get ready to try to start it again.
Okay, so this is where we're at. Um, I wasn't getting spark at the distributor. Well, I was, I had power, um, but the, the lobe that, that it rides on in the distributor, um, in the center, it was, it was misadjusted so that it wasn't, it wasn't causing the spark and separating as it went around. Um, it was just closed all the time. So probably whoever rebuilt the distributor or whatever, the car never run af ran after that. Um, it couldn't have because it wasn't creating a spark. So I um, cleaned out the distributor. I, I bent the arm just a little bit so that uh, when it rides on the lobe, it'll create a spark, which it did. Um, so I put it back together and uh, now we're gonna crank it again. So we should have spark to the spark plugs um, and whatever, so we'll see. <laughs> it fired, <laughs> did you hear that? Try it again. I'm getting fuel to the fuel filter down there, so the pump is pumping something. The pump is pumping something. <laughs> More songs. I gotta write that down. Uh, I'll just write it down in the dust right here. Okay, there we go. Try it again. Okay, this thing is gonna run. This is gonna run. Now, I say that, um, we heard it run just for a, a second there. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna walk a little closer to you since you apparently are afraid the car's gonna blow up and you're way over there. Um, there are so many things. Um, the, I don't even know if the carburetor's carburetting. I can spray some starter fluid down the, you know, the intake and it fires a little bit. I can see that the fuel pump is starting to draw fuel. Um, but what happens when the bowl fills? You know, are, are all our little orifices orificing? You know, I'm just saying, let's, let's get excited, but let's not get too excited. We've, we've, one thing at a time. So anyway, let's, um, It wants to run though, that is for sure. Okay, so let me get a drink of water. I'm dying. By the way, this is the battery out of Ella. I swapped the cables back and, you know, I ain't got time for that. Let's just, okay, this battery is brand new. So let's just use Ella's battery. She won't mind, she's uh, still waiting. Um, really what I should probably do is fill that bowl with fuel. Um, so let me go find some fuel. I'm gonna try to fill the bowl and see if it'll draw from the, from the bowl all by itself. Let's just dump some fuel in here. It says true fuel. I don't mean this is really fuel. <laughs> this is the true fuel brand. Um, and it's got a little bit of that two cycle in it. Which will help lubricate things a little bit, hopefully. A 
Okay. So, first of all, let's see if the squirters work. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's not really good, what's happening there. Uh, there may be some seals not sealing. I'm seeing some fuel dripping, just, just drip dripping. So let's just give this a try here. It's probably very flooded right now. Well, it's idling off of the um, off of the bowl, for sure. Golly, this engine's quiet. Let's see if I can see any uh, fuel. filter is filling up. It doesn't want any uh, and the, <laughs> the carburetor is leaking. That's okay, you know. Uh, no danger there. Leaking carburetors. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's leaking out of the uh, accelerator pump or the. Uh... But the um, fuel pump definitely is working. It's pumping up fuel, uh, but this carburetor is leaking. And I'm pretty sure it's going to have to come off and either get rebuilt or replaced. But I, I think we, we can be satisfied. The engine runs. I mean, it ran. It ran off that bowl, even though the bowl's leaking, fuel pumps pumping fuel. Um, ah, it just ran so quiet. Just no galloping, no hiccuping, just kind of just ran. This is a sweet little 289. I mean, seriously, uh, you know, I just, I love it. Just love it. How'd we end up back here, you ask? Well, uh, just, we just did. Okay. Um, I'm not sure why my hands are on my hips, but now that I'm doing it, I don't know if I can take them off because then it would be kind of obvious that I'm doing it. And, you know, I just want it to seem like I'm doing, you know, it's just it's all, all the time. This is how I stand. <sighs> okay. Uh, we're just going to slowly move them down. Hopefully nobody notices. What we're doing here at the back of the car is uh, I'm going to scope out the gas tank. Just a little probe down there. See what it looks like inside. Uh, I could pull it down, uh, but let's, maybe it's fine and we can just use the tank, replace the lines from the tank to the engine um, since we're waiting on a decision for the uh, carburetor and all of that. Uh, I figure we'd take a peek back here, see what's up. So 
Uh, let me grab my scope, throw a battery on it, and uh, hopefully it's long enough. If I can see anything in it, I've not used this for a while, it is covered in dust. Uh, I will let you know. I will let you know. Oh, there's a key here in the trunk area. Oh, look at that. Wow. Okay. We have a Ford Mustang shop manual. Well, that's handy. And uh, some hubcaps and whatnot and so forth. Oh, I bet you've not seen one of these for a while. A mobile Super 10W40, one quart in a can. Well, it's a cardboard can. All seasons motor oil saves gas. Wow, that is so cool. Okay. Well, let's uh, take a peek back here. Yep, there we go. Okay. See what we can see. I just can't hardly believe it. I mean, I got to show you. It was crazy. Okay, so what you see here is the edge of the fill tube going into the tank. So we're going to push down into the tank. close look at we're looking at the bottom I know it's disorienting because we're it looks like it's the top of the tank but it's really the bottom of the tank look at that look at how clean that is that's uh it's just galvanized metal I, I think this tank is fine which is good that is excellent news that means hopefully all I have to do is uh, um, replace the rubber lines. I'm getting ahead of myself. Who knows what I'm going to have to do, but it looks like I don't have to replace the tank, which is good. Good news for me. Good news for the customer. By the way, have you uh, taken a minute to look inside this car? I mean, it is a time capsule. I mean, the, I just love old steering wheels, old gauges, how they laid things out. I mean, look over here. This is the, you know, I would call it HVAC, but you know, the heater vent controls, fan controls, conveniently located as far away from the passenger as possible, which thank you, Ford, that's genius, you know, it's bad enough they put the radio right where the passenger can reach it and just change channels willy-nilly. But Ford did it right here. They're like, nope, driver's in charge of the uh, heat. Whatever the driver wants, that's what the driver gets. So, uh, that, of course, before they had dual climate control where every whiny hiney could just have whatever temperature they wanted and wherever they wanted it. So, uh, you know, good old days, back in the good old days. Yeah, very, very cool. It reminds me a lot of my 67 because it's the same. <laughs> uh, I also had the manual transmission, uh, except mine had been converted to a T5 before I bought it, which was a great upgrade, by the way. I had to put a clutch in that car, but other than that, and, uh, don't let the splits in the seats um, discourage you because you can buy full vinyl interior kits, back seat, front seat, between four and $600 with the hog ring and the hog ring pliers. 
instructions, you can do it yourself. Ask me how I know. You take things so literally. Okay, I'll tell you how I know. Because um, I did it on my 67 in my living room at the time. Now, I don't normally work on cars in my living room. But when I do, it's for a 67 Mustang. <laughs> Actually, it's just the only place I had at the time. And it's so tedious and boring to replace uh, upholstery. I wanted a television to watch while I was doing it. And so I did it in the house. And uh, you know, now I don't have that problem because, you know. But also, I don't plan on reupholstering a car because I don't like doing that. So, but you can do it yourself. It's not that hard. You'll have very strong hands when you get done or sore hands, whatever. Uh, and if you wonder why, well, do it and then you'll know. I don't even have to tell you. Okay, so the um, plan moving forward is to wait to hear from the owner whether we, we're rebuilding the carburetor or replacing the carburetor. Once we do that, then, um, well, the plan is to do that because I'd really like to get the engine running up to temperature on a fuel jug uh, to make sure what's working, what's not. Is the thermostat open up? Well, you know, what kind of things do we have going on further? Um, I already know probably 153% chance I'm going to have to replace some fuel line under the car. We'll get there when we get there. Uh, I think uh, let's not do brakes. Let's not do that until we know for sure that we've got a solid foundation to build on. So uh, there's, especially since, um, you know, labor isn't cheap. Let's not do too much labor before we have to do the labor uh, and then let the owner decide kind of as we go along uh, what we need to do or what, you know, kind of what direction uh, he would like to go with the car. So, okay, uh, just uh, hang out, whatever, whatever it is you do when you're hanging out, you do that. And uh, I'm gonna just do a little more researching on the computer for parts and uh, estimates and whatnot and so forth and so on. The end, amen. <music>
that uh, this unit here is not doing the unit things. So I've hooked my remote starter up to it um, just so I can listen to it. And probably now that you're here, you know how that works. You know, you're like, hey, come look at this. And then it doesn't do it. <laughs> so we'll see. I'll be super happy if it starts because then I can burp the system, get it up to operating temperature and, uh, you know, move it indoors where it's not raining or it's not going to rain. Anyway, let's, let's see, see what happens. Pull the trigger. Oh wait, it wouldn't start anyway because I don't have the key turned. Let's turn the key. Oh, I do have it turned, you know, because I'm prepared like that. Okay, here we go. See if you can hear it click or start one of the two. Ah, hear that? Also, when you put your finger on it, uh, hang on, let me just take this uh, adjustment tool here. Just give it a light little tap, you know, nothing severe. And uh, so if you put your finger here, you can, you can actually feel it. Well, now it's not gonna do it. Even the little uh, adjustment tool didn't. Let's just see if, uh, see if it broke anything loose there. No, not at all. Uh, it did the last two times, didn't this time. So I got nothing, you know, I've got power and uh, I've got, uh, you know, it's doing the things, so. Hey there, Cloud. You can uh, just kind of move on if you would. That would be great. Okay. Um, well, let me, uh, I might have one of these. If not, I'll order it. Okay, let's not pay attention to the thunder clouds in the distance. Maybe they're going away. Um, so I haven't swapped this out. I actually have a used one uh, that came off of a Ford Bronco, which was a 78. You can, you can see the differences. Really the only one is that there's this post here and it's missing here. Um, and this, is a post that just goes to ground. Um, but anyway, while I was taking this off, I noticed that the old cable, wherever I laid it, where did I lay it? Oh, up here. That when I was, I was like moving it and it was intermittently giving me clicks like, like Maybe it's corroded in there or something. Anyway, so I just thought, well, before I take this thing off, let me just swap a cable that I have on there and see if it makes any difference at all. So, you know, why not? Let's see. Oh, there you go. So it might have been a bad cable. I can put a proper sized one on there. Um, but probably what was happening is it wasn't getting juice to the start, not enough juice because of the connection here. So, and it didn't make any difference hooking my remote starter from here to here because it still wasn't getting enough juice. So that's my theory. Um, I'll put a better cable on there 
and um, we'll just drive it and just keep seeing if that if that fixes the problem. So, okay. Well, I'm going to let this idle for a bit, and um, hopefully come to operating temperature, and um, you know see what the deal is. I might move it inside while it's running and then uh, or at least mostly inside we'll let it we'll just let it idle out here you know if it starts raining it's running so I can just move it in you're you're right here with me in my thought process it's scary I know it's scary anyway I'm gonna let this uh, come up to temperature, check for leaks around the water neck, and um, yeah, try to burp everything out of the system, make sure I've got, um, you know, it full of coolant and all that stuff, so. Okay, yeah, go uh, put your raincoat on. Or go inside, one of the two. I forgot to tell you something. I didn't, I wasn't, you know, withholding information. Uh, but while I was, uh, not on purpose, I was withholding information. I just didn't remember that I was. Um, I took the heater control valve out of the heater line to put in the T adapter, T fitting adapter, uh, something like this, you know. So I can hook a hose and get, get all of the stuff flushed out of the system. Um, but whilst I was doing that, uh, the old one just kind of crumbled apart in my hands, like so much plastic dust. Um, you can see it's broken, you know. I don't know if you can see the little valve in there if I press the, press the valve. It does move a little bit. Anyway, um, it was kind of fortuitous, serendipitous. I'm just, I just throw words out there, whatever they mean, uh, because I was taking it out anyway. So these are like $30 to replace, and uh, so I am going to put another one, a new one in there when it comes in next week. I just didn't want you to think Go around in your head thinking, hey, this guy's life is perfect and nothing ever goes wrong. Uh, this is not some sort of Instagram life. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Instagram life. I probably just swore in sign language and I'm sorry. If you're deaf and I swore at you, I apologize. It was complete ignorance on my part. So. I will watch my hand movements from now on. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I'm, uh, yeah, that'll be next week. And then tires. So I'm waiting for tires to come in. We're uh, gonna go kind of away from the, you know, old man grandma look. No offense to old men and grandmas. You know, taste is taste, and Ella has old man grandma tires on. on it's appropriate, okay? I'm just saying, we're gonna go away from that on this car without judgment, and go more toward a tire that exudes youthful exuberance. Um, a different size, a different style. Yeah, you'll be here for that. But that might be next week because uh, 
we're waiting for those to come in. Other, th other than that, this car's done. Heater control valve, tires. I'll do this cable real quick right now. And uh, yeah, this car will just go down the road, hopefully. Uh, hey, you can just stay right there. I feel like this hood is really low and I'm... <laughs> I, need, I need it up here somewhere, but it's not up here. This is as far as it goes. Okay. Um, I was just going to, while I'm changing this cable out, uh, kind of point out something. It's not a big deal, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. So uh, now I kind of feel like I made it a big deal by saying it's not a big deal. Because that's what people say when it is a big deal. But this is really not a big deal. I just wanted to show it to you, tell it to you, show and tell it to you. Okay, uh, we're going to just pretend I didn't get off track. Um, so in this car, um, the uh, power cable is over here, it's black. The negative cable is over here, it's red. Doesn't matter, you know. Uh, it, traditionally, it's the other way around, but in this case, the owner has it marked on the top of the posts, so there's no confusion. Um, and he's the owner, and he also works on the car himself, and if he needs a new battery, he'll probably put it in, and he's gonna know. There's no, it's not a problem, it's not a big deal really. Um, however, what I am going to suggest is I'm looking at the date on this battery when it was born, 1017. So, you know, we're at seven years old. It's probably getting close to needing to be replaced. What I'm going to suggest is that he put buy a battery where the positive is over here. This is why, and you probably know this already. When I go to loosen this here on the positive side, it is really, really close to the fender. Well, if you have power near metal ground source, you know, you sometimes get little sparks and little, you know, nobody likes that. Uh, if the power is over here. Well, we got rubber, we got air. Power loves rubber and air. Well, actually it doesn't love it because it can't do anything with it, but we love it. So um, what I'm going to do is make both cables red <laughs> to really confuse things. No, that's not why. I'm doing it because eventually this negative cable is going to have to be replaced and we can just put a black one on there and then it'll be fixed. But I'm also putting a cable on there that can reach both sides. Like this red cable here can reach both sides. Uh, that way we have the option of moving this power over to here because that's kind of the safer place. As it is, I'm having to loosen this up very carefully because I don't want to ground out. <laughs> you know, I don't want sparks. So anyway, that I just thought I'd, you know, I'd just mention it. Not a big deal. Just figured I'd mention it. We're going to work this carefully off of the positive post. Then, without any sort of... Uh, caution. I can remove it from the starter solenoid because now we don't have any power to it. So no caution necessary, at least in that sense. Okay, so we're going to take this out, throw it on the floor, and we're going to attach this. Now you notice I'm attaching it to the solenoid first. That is the proper order of things. Snug her down. Not too snug. You don't want to break your solenoid. 
you know, you want it tight, but I mean, you don't want to twist anything off in there. And then this cable will be able to reach both sides, uh, but it's going back on this side for now, because that is where it goes. Anyway, carefully, carefully, with care, because we care, we do it carefully. Okay, and you don't have to over tighten these. You know, it has this bolt here and it just squeezes a little, it just needs to make contact. We don't need to hammer down on it until these two things are squeezed together. It's not necessary. So, okay, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. I'm just, I just like to, you know, say things. So, okay, well, there we go. That's fixed. And um, now we can just wait for the other parts to come in. I don't know about you, but it's Friday. I think it's beer 30 or water, apple juice, you know, whatever's your pleasure, coffee. It's a little late for coffee, but each to his own. I will not judge. Oh, I just decided, you know, to sit outside. It's so nice. You're probably asking me, Eric, it's like bright, sunshiny day out. Why are you quitting so early? Well, I, I can't be working every second of every minute. You know, throw me a bone. I have no idea what that expression means, but it felt appropriate. <sighs> I'll probably go back to work later or tomorrow. <laughs> I, I actually uh, have some uh, interesting things to me. Um, an old friend, the uh, 64 Plymouth uh, Sport Fury convertible from uh, a while ago. That's back in the shop. Uh, it's running badly. It got towed here. So I haven't even I haven't done anything with it. So we'll probably jump on that. Uh, next week, finish up the T-Bird, and uh, hopefully I hear something back from the owner on the 67 Mustang, um, because I'd like some direction on it. Um, what else? Who knows what else? Uh, this week I did take Mr. F to uh, get inspected. Um, so uh, now I have to go back to the DMV. It's like, <laughs> it's like you have to go to the DMV three times. You have to go once to get it registered, get your plates, but then you, you, they won't allow you to get your title till you get inspected. So you go get inspected, you have to make an appointment. Impossibility, what's the word? Uh, uh, I was thinking unobtainium impossibility in tanium. Um, anyway, very difficult to get an appointment. Got one two and a half hours away. So I drove there and back this week, got it inspected, and now I have to go back to the DMV because I love that place and uh, show them my inspection paperwork so that they can type it in and uh, get me a title. So now that that's done though, I can, uh, hey there B, nope, you can't have this. Mm. Anyway, um, that, that B just lost my concentration for me. Oh yeah, Mr. F. So now I can pull his engine and take the engine apart. So we're gonna have an episode coming up, just Mr. F pulling his engine out, taking it apart and seeing what the heck is wrong with it. Pardon my French. I really want to drive that car. Anyway, 
That's going to do it this week. I am so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're enjoying this beautiful weather with me, even though we had a, a rainstorm that rained, I guess, stormed, it rainstormed. And, uh, but it brought the cool fall air and I love it. So I hope we see you next week. We, as in me, <laughs> corporate, the corporate me, uh, <laughs> I hope to see you next week, and uh, we'll see what happens, you know? I think we'll have some fun times. So, anyway, cheers. That's all I got.